Hello, welcome back. In this segment, I will show how we can use RSA to encrypt only one bit from Alice to Bob, for example. Remember, RSA's encryption function is just m power e mod n. We talked about it earlier. And uh, what happens if m is only one bit? You can't just directly call m power e mod n. Otherwise, the eavesdropper will immediately tell whether Alice was sending zero or one, right? All you have to do is just compute the m power e mod n and check whether it is zero. If it is zero, and the eavesdropper will immediately know Alice sent zero. If it is one, of course, it will be also clear it's one. It's being sent from Alice to Bob. So how do we handle this problem? Just sending only one bit from Alice to Bob. The construction is actually pretty neat. So let's say Alice's goal is to send a bit M to Bob. What Alice will do, she will pick a random number R from the group Z star N. Uh, N is the public key parameter, right? E and N together makes up the public key of Bob. Therefore, we can assume it's publicly known and it's vetted. Okay, so uh, Alice trusts the public key of Bob. Uh, in that case, what Alice is going to do, she's going to randomly pick a number R from Z star N. The only condition is that the least significant bit of R must be M. Meaning if M is uh, say a number zero, right? M is an even number. Uh, she will generate a random number R uh, such a way that the least significant bit of R is also a zero. If such a R doesn't exist, you will generate a new R. Of course, in, with probability of half, you can easily find uh, such an R, okay? Once such an R is uh, found, uh, what she will do, she will then apply the regular RSA function. This is the regular RSA function, right? R power E mod N, and R, is, R becomes the message. Uh, so she will then send the C to, to Bob. Bob will um, take the incoming C and applies the, the private key D on top of it. So C, C power D mod N will become R. We, we already proved that. And the next step for Bob is to just up compute the least significant bit of R and then he gets the, the same message M. So this is pretty neat. Um, from an eavesdropping perspective, if somebody's eavesdropping the ciphertext C, they cannot tell whether Alice picked M equal to zero or M equal to one because from C, we don't know how to find R, okay? And even more interesting is that, which I will talk later, there's a notion of a hardcore predicate uh, in hardcore bit in RSA, where the least significant bit of the message um, is as hard as to find as breaking the entire RSA scheme, okay? That's basically uh, the, the idea behind this approach. But you need to be careful that you can't use this in context where the eavesdropper is allowed to modify the ciphertext, okay? This is secure only against eavesdropping, okay? Um, if somebody moni monitors the ciphertext C, they can't tell whether Alice sent zero or one. Okay, uh, you probably saw that this is already a very nice step toward introducing randomness into RSA. Suppose I would like to uh, send a, a message, same message if I send it two times, the, the ciphertext will not tell which, whether I sent zero, zero or zero, one or one, zero or whatnot, because I'm selecting a random R every time for encrypting one bit at a time. Of course, the size of the ciphertext is enormous. Um, it, it is it is of uh, the same size as the uh, size of the, the modulus n. Um, if n is a 20, 48 bit number, then the ciphertext will also be like very likely 20, 48 bit number. Okay, so even if you want to encrypt only one bit, the size of the uh, ciphertext expands, but, but uh, nevertheless, it's interesting to see how uh, we can encrypt only one bit, pick a random number r from z star n, such that least significant bit of r is same as the message you would like to send. Okay. A couple of things to note is this is secure only against eavesdropping, okay? And if somebody multiplies the ciphertext by two power e, they, they are going to change the odd number to an even number, okay? That's possible, of course. But uh, we should not use this in such context. We should only use in context where eavesdropping is the only threat, okay? 